guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today we're going to be showing you how to build a Nexus 7 LCD mount for your DSLR controller application. So what we're going to be doing is actually building this mount so that you can actually mount it to uh, an external hot shoe um, hookup or put it right on top of your camera. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over how to actually build it and all the supplies you're going to need. Now, it does cost roughly about $20 to build one of these mounts, maybe a little bit less. Um, some of the stuff that we're going to be getting is, uh, is like $5 for the item, but you're only going to use a small amount of it, uh, like the Loctite that we're going to use for the actual uh, screws and bolts. So, uh, so let's go over all the supplies that we're going to need to actually build this. So the first thing, um, we're going to go over is we're just going to go over this whole entire table of all the supplies. Some of this stuff you will not need. Like I'm going to talk a little bit about paint and primer. So if you wanted to make your actually wood wood piece on the back a little bit nicer, uh, you can paint and primer it. So we're going to go over paint and primering it later on in the video. So if you're interested in doing that, stay to the end. Um, and the rest of it's kind of a, a necessity that we've got laid out here on the table. So uh, one thing you're going to need is you're going to need a coupling nut. Uh, these right here are roughly a dollar to a dollar fifty a piece. Um, they come in a two pack at Lowe's, so I think I paid maybe two seventy five for a two pack. You're going to need a six a six inch uh, threaded rod. You will need some wood screws. You're only going to need one wood screw, but they come in packs of six. I think it was like a dollar for this for the uh, the rod here. I think I paid. Uh, maybe a dollar for the rod. Uh, you're going to need some super glue, so some high end super glue. You're going to need some threaded lock or lock type. These two nuts right here, you're going to need the thread lock to lock those in so they don't move and it's going to stay secure. Um, you're also going to need what I, what I ended up getting is a two by two um, by three feet. So uh, I've cut it down. Um, I actually got the guys at Lowe's to cut it for me, but you can use a hacksaw for that. We're also going to be using the hacksaw to cut the six inch threaded rod as well. So, um, so this is the uh, main piece. I, I cut it, it's two by two by two. So it's two inches long, two feet, and two, two inches in diameter. So this works really well. Uh, you're going to need a plastic cover right here to actually lock to put your Nexus 7 in. I'm going to have a link down below so you can order one of those because um, you are going to have to order that online. You're not going to be able to find that in town. You're going to need a LCD hookup right here. Again, this is about six or seven dollars. I'll put a link down below. Uh, I ordered that off Amazon. It seems to be a pretty well made one. Uh, and then you're going to need your USB toggle right here. Um, again, that's about a dollar and I will put a link down below so you can order that. Um, you're also going to need some sanding paper. So if you've already got sanding paper, you probably don't need to go out and get this, but I got this sanding grit uh, sponge. It's a fine, um, so you want to use fine sanding paper, not a rough sanding paper, so you can smooth this out before you paint and primer it as well. You do want to go on and sand this before you actually start putting it together, even if you aren't going to paint and primer it, because it will be much smoother and it will be a lot nicer. Now some of the tools that we're actually going to use is going to be the hacksaw. We're going to use uh, pliers here. Um, it doesn't really matter which pliers you're going to need, but as you can see in the back of this, we're going to use pliers to actually uh, lock lock the the nuts into the wood. Um, you're also going to need three different size drill bits: a fifteenth by sixty-four, a eleventh by sixty-four, and a seventh by sixty-four. Now these are not dead on, you have to use these. Um, you, you can eyeball it and see if you like a different drill bit better, but these are the drill, three drill bits that I used when I built this one. And then I've got paint and primer um, gloves. I hate getting paint on my hands, so I always have some latex gloves. You are going to need a power drill, wireless or corded, and then a basic Phillips, Phillips head tip to go into your drill. And those are going to be all the parts that you're going to need to actually build it. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start constructing the uh, DIY mount. All right guys, so the first thing I like to do is I like to go on and sand off the wood once it's been cut from the block here. So um, like I said, it's two inches by two feet long by the width or the depth is two, two inches long. So it's two by two by two, um, all inches. Um, so all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your sponge and you're just gonna keep doing this so you get a nice smooth surface. It may take a second, 
So what I do is I do, I just go all the way around. Once I'm done with that, I do the bottoms. And now as long as that is smooth, I go to the other bottom part here. And then I just go through and I double check and I fill it to make sure there's no rough edges. Some of these corners are gonna be a little rough still, so you're gonna to have to go through and, wet and hit these corners hard. Because you wanna get this block of wood as smooth as possible. So that's why you wanna get the fine tip. It's gonna do a better job of sanding instead of the more rough, grainier tips, rough, grainier sponges, I'd say. So, oh, almost there. So once that's done, it feels pretty nice. We can smooth out this bottom part just a tad bit more. There we go. And we'll smooth this out a tad bit more. So next what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna go on and paint it and primer it. Again, we're gonna show you how to do that at the end of the video. So, uh, so if you guys wanna stick around for that, we'll go over painting and primering it. So your next object, if you don't wanna paint and primer it, would be to go on and put a hole right center down the middle of this. So we're gonna use the 15th by 64 hole bit to make a hole, and we're just gonna go straight down and we're gonna make one solid hole. So we're gonna need the power drill for this. And I'm just gonna hold it in there and we're just gonna go straight down with it. come out. Well, my uh, power drill died, so I had to go charge it up real quick, and I switched over to a 1 4th drill bit. So I'm using the 15th 64th uh, drill bit to just do a basic hole, and I'm going to do a, another hole with the 1 4th drill bit, um, which should allow this to go through the block quite comfortably. So... There we go, and we're just going to go on and get the other side real quick. Get rid of the sawdust. And now, my rod fits right through. So now what you want to do is you want to figure out how tall you want it to stick off. Because you got to be thinking, you know, it's going to be sitting on the back like this, and then how tall do you want it to be? Which really, you could just use the full six inches, you may not need to solve this. The nice thing about the hacksaw is if you do want to cut it back a little bit, you can use the hacksaw. It will cut through the one of this real easy. What you want to do is you want to be real light with the hacksaw and, uh, and not like a heavy motion, but a real light motion and it will cut right through. But what I'm actually going to do is, well, we're going to put this on here, the nut and I'm actually just going to put it on there like that. And then we're going to use some Loctite and we're going to lock that that in. So now you want to be real careful with the Loctite. Just a tad bit it goes a really far away. And then you're just going to Tighten your, your bolt down on top of it. And then you're going to wait a little while. And we're going to go on and put the bottom piece in here. And we'll put some Loctite on it. And then that will be secure in your block of wood. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, unscrew this a tad bit, a little bit of Loctite, oops, and uh, I should have brought a paper towel out so I could wipe up all, wipe up all the excess Loctite, and then just tighten it down. Yeah, and then what you want to do is you want to take. 
your two pairs of pliers and you want to tighten it up again just to make sure it's as tight as it can go. And that should already be pretty tight, but just in case it isn't. And then you just let the Loctite dry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. I'm going to grab a paper towel and clean up this little mess I just made, and I'll be right back. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our coupling nut in there. Uh, just a tad bit of Loctite inside of it as well. Once it's in there, you're just going to take it. And you're going to screw it in about halfway so you can kind of look down the barrel to see, figure out where halfway is because you're going to need enough room for this to be able to screw into. So that is probably good. We've got a little bit of Loctite in there. We're going to take this paper towel and we're going to apply a tad bit more Loctite in there. And it really just takes a very small amount. Screw it on. And then you're going to want to wait again about 10 minutes and it should be good. Next thing we do, once we've got the Loctite here and this is all good and secure, wood is not going anywhere, um, is you would take your little mount and you would screw it in there. The nice thing about this is this is made to be taken on and off so you can take it on and off, break down the, the mount a little bit if you wanted to. Um, so the Loctite's still drying down below so I'm not going to attach this at the moment because if the Loctite dries on this then this is going to be stuck on this and I don't want it to be permanently stuck. So our next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting glue on the back of this wood and then we're going to be attaching it to the actual case for the Nexus 7. So when it comes to putting the glue down, oops, there we go, you want to put very, very, very small amounts of glue. Not too much, because what's going to happen is when you smoosh it on, when you actually smoosh it on the case, it's going to expand and it's going to look really bad if you put too much glue. So you just want to put small amounts of glue. It doesn't take a lot of glue to hold the actual case into place. We're also going to be screwing it in as well so it will be double secure through glue and actually being screwed in through your wood screws. So then what you're going to do is you want to make sure that the Nexus 7 piece uh, to turn on the power on and off is going to be up top. So you want to make sure you don't want to put this in on the wrong in the wrong direction so that your Nexus 7 is kind of flipped upside down. I prefer to have it to where I can push my power up and down so like this would be connected like this instead of like this. I find it, for me, it works better like this. So then what you're going to try to do is find the most even spot on the case, centered and even, and then you're just going to push it down. And then once you've done that, you want to take something with a little bit of weight, a little bit more weight than that. And then you want to leave it like that for roughly, and it's going to be pretty secure. You want to leave it like that for about five minutes just to make sure. It should be, it's actually probably pretty well. It's not going to move around much right now, but I'm going to give it like five minutes to really dry. And then we're going to put a hole, drill, put a drill bit through here, add a hole, and then we're going to add in one more screw. Now that the glue has hardened and is actually good to go. As you can see, the block of wood is pretty well secured to the case. Um, you could leave it like this if you wanted to. You could run with this and you'd be good to go. But I like to take it one more step further. So what I'm going to do is throw in the 7th and 64 inch bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a small hole. Now we want to make sure it's not a dead on centered hole that's going to go, that's actually going to get, that's going to hit the actual six inch threaded uh, screw here. So I'm going to go off to the right side a little bit. Oh, well, didn't tight it down enough there. Make sure it's tight. And we're going to make a hole. Now your hole doesn't need to be that long. So I made one hole. Um, that's just a 
preliminary hole, and then we're going to use the 11th and 64 bit, and we're going to make our finalized hole. It just works a little bit better so you don't end up cracking the plastic if you go with a, a smaller bit first and then go into a larger bit second, which we could double check to make sure that that bit isn't, isn't uh, too small as you can see. It fits in there but the screw's not gonna fit in there. It's not gonna fit in there comfortably quite yet without a little bit of a bigger hole. So we're gonna drill in a tiny bit bigger hole here. And then once you get your bigger hole, blow on it. And we're gonna switch over to our, our Phillips head bit here. Secure it in there, and we're going to drill in this tiny little wood screw. And that's going to hold it into place a little bit more, and it's fairly flush with the, the case. So all you got to do now is pop this out. We're gonna pop out the Nexus 7 out of the original case I made. We're gonna pop it into the new case. As you can see, it fits in there nice and comfortably. It holds. It's not gonna come apart. It's gonna hold up. This will work with any any type of any type of tablet um, that's, that has the same that you can get the same type of case, uh, hard plastic case that can be drilled into. Um, I'm saying that this case is probably for a lot of the the mainstream. Uh, Android tablets, so this can be duplicated in that shape, form, or fashion. Uh, I'm also going to be selling these, so if anybody is interested in getting one, you can order one through, uh, you can just message me if you want to get one made. I don't have a price point yet, I'm going to have to sit down and figure out exactly what they cost me to make now that I have some of the supplies, like the Loctite, I only had to buy that once, and that will be good for a handful of tablets, uh, tablet mounts. So. Uh, this is a pretty good, awesome mount. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to paint this. So if you wanted to paint this block and make it look nice, um, you'd want to do all the painting before you did all the, the screwing and drilling here. Um, so anyways, we're going to do the painting and then that's going to be it. Okay guys, so we've got two different blocks of wood here. Uh, this one has been sanded, but it has not had the primer put on where this one we've already put the primer on it and it just needs to be painted. Uh, dark brown, which is the color I went with, or the light brown actually is the color I went with. If you haven't, go on and take your Take your fine sponge, fine sand grade sponge, and just smooth that bad boy out. Well, before you shake it, make sure that it is not open. Um, I've already gone on and shook it since then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and open it up. There's my primer, and I like to just use a plate. I always wear gloves. I really am OCD about getting stuff all over me. And so we're just gonna dip our little paint, paint sponge here and we're just going to sponge very small amounts, not very much primer. Make sure you get everything. But what I like to do is I like to take the blocks. You're going to have one, that's, one side that's not going to get done. You're going to put it directly on the bottom and what you're going to do is you're just going to spin the plate around and you're going to get each side. You just got to be really, really soft not to move the block of wood. And get the sides, take your time, there's no hurry. And you don't want to put too much primer on there. Um, if you notice, I'll show you in this block, I put a little too much primer on there and it, there's a little extra left over that doesn't need to be there. So, And you want to go around your edges and you want to make sure you don't got too much paint around your edges. So once you get done doing your block, and I'm almost finished with this one. And it takes about an hour before you can paint again. I'm just going to leave it out here in the sun for about an hour and it should be good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this paint that's on here. And then there's a little ex excess paint around the block. So I'm just going to go, go around and try to find the excess paint so that it's all evenly dispersed. 
distributed, I should say, around the block properly. And there you go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry for an hour, and then we'll paint. Then we'll paint that bottom part. Then we'll paint it brown. Um, is what we normally do. But since I've already pre-painted this one, what we're going to do is we're going to go on and put the top back on this primer. And I just like to just take my flat head, bang it back into place, so I'm ready to use it again. Take my sponge. And then I've got paint all over that hand, so. Now this one we haven't opened, so we want to shake it real good, and then we're going to stir it once it's been opened. Try not to make a mess with this one like the primer. Oh, it's good to go. So I probably don't even need to stir it. It looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do, same thing. We're going to set the block down to get my little sponge thing. These are like 79 cents at Lowe's. They're really cheap. And we're just going to go through and we're going to put a coat of paint on it. Now you might want to do one or two coats. Uh, it's up to you. Um, I will probably do two coats just for the heck of it. It will look a little bit nicer with two coats. Get a little bit more paint here. And the sponge is really good because it's got a really thin tip on it. So it allows me to go all the way to the bottom of the block and work my way up. And we just keep spinning it around here. And the paint should be dry within an hour, hour and a half. And there you go. So all you have to do is let those dry. Once they're dried, like this is still drying quite a bit, you're going to flip them over to the one side that you did not paint. Paint that. Let it dry again. If you need to put on a second coat of, of, of your paint, go on and put on a second coat. You can get any color you like. And uh, once that is dry, then you can go on and drill your holes in and start with the project. So I uh, hope this guy's, hope this helped you out. Mm -hmm.